So I was just browsing YouTube and I came across a really old account of mine that I haven't used since at least I would say 2011. And what I found on the channel, if you have a look, it's uh, Ryon1981, R-I-O-N-N-E-1981. I was so shocked to see this account because I literally haven't touched it for, you know, almost 10 years. I forgot that I even had it. I found one of my old Aikido classes that I'm ashamed to say I was teaching a class once a week as a Nida, a second dan, which isn't cool. But in my defense, the only reason that I was doing it is because I wanted to get free kickboxing classes in the gym. And um, this dojo was called multi -do, And their concept was, it was run, run by two Frenchmen. And their concept was every day in the gym would be a different martial art. They had judo, they had kickboxing, they had you know, karate. And actually the only reason that I went down to the gym is because my friend Eric was teaching kickboxing there twice a week. Now, I want to get onto a little bit about Eric in a second, but to join Eric's classes, you know, the only way to get it for free was to, to, to teach a martial arts. So I offered to teach them, you know, Aikido. I was kind of shocked to go back and watch myself as a 27 year old Nidan teaching Aikido. I don't recommend it, but I go back and I look at it and I can kind of hold my head pretty high uh, for, you know, the kind of things that I was trying to get across to the point. There were white belts, like complete rookies, beginners. Um, and what surprised me so much is that I was doing this at 27 years of age, teaching this Aikido class with different concepts to the, the normal stuff, much along the lines how how I think and how I teach right now. But I was doing it all in Japanese. So, even back then when my Japanese was, it was still pretty good at the time. I was four years removed from uh, having done my international exchange at a Japanese university. You know, I had a whole year of immersion in Japanese in classes there and have a look at the video, tell me what you think. Um, and yeah, it was kind of nice to see that kind of stuff 12 years later on. So this video was from 2008 that I uploaded and long before my friend Eric, rest in peace, passed away, uh, I miss Eric every day. Eric was ahead of his time and he had a, a YouTube channel called Gaijin Ass. He, he is Mr. Gaijin Ass. He was like one of the biggest badasses in Tokyo that I ever met. I went to Eric and I said to him, even back in 2006, I said to him, I just want to be a pro wrestler. You know, I was doing Aikido. I hadn't done uh, karate since I was 20. So I had been missing the kicks of karate and the punching, but all I wanted to be was a pro wrestler. And I said to that, I said that to Eric and Eric's advice to me was back in 2006, he's like, look, man, in Japan, pro wrestlers cross over into MMA, kickboxers cross over into MMA, MMA fighters cross over into pro wrestling. You know, everyone does everything here. So you never know if you join this kickboxing gym, the one that he was at, Ihara Dojo, you never know where that might, might lead. And, you know, it was like a prophecy because in the end of 2006, I joined that kickboxing gym. So I'm in the kickboxing gym. I'm probably there for about four years. And there was an older lady in there, Japanese lady, I want to say probably mid 50s. And after training one day, she had always long admired um, the foreign fighters in Japan. And she loved talking to foreigners in the gym. And she said to me one day, like, I'm a fortune teller, All right? And she offered right there in the gym to, you know, uh, do my tarot cards and read my poems. So obviously I accepted and she puts all the tarot cards out and mm, mm, 
looks at my lines on my hands. Your life path is completely skewed, she said. You're not doing what you want to do. And I thought to myself, well, yes, bloody hell. I mean, I, I could have told you that. She said, so what is it that you want to do? Like, well, you know, what, what do you want to do that makes you happy? And I said, look, all I ever wanted to be was a filmmaker and a pro wrestler. And only six months earlier, I had met current NXT superstar Bobby Fish, who was with Noah at the time. I had met him at a show and he's also a kickboxer. So I had brought him down to the gym, the kickboxing gym to try and get him some professional fights in Japan. And he had talked to me about, you know, helping me try to get into the Noah dojo at the time. And, you know, I had told him that you know, I do Aikido and I, you know, do kickboxing and, you know, I can take the bumps and I can take the ukemi, you know, and he said, no, 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 the pro wrestling bumps, the break falls are completely different. They're going to have to break you down and start all over again. And I said, that's cool. But it never happened. Um, I had emailed Tajiri at Smash earlier that year and didn't hear anything back. Later on, Tajiri told me that he didn't even get the email. It went to the Smash head office and they didn't even, they didn't get it or they ignored it or whatever. So whatever, it's fate. So I didn't get into Smash earlier. I didn't, I didn't get accepted into Noah. I didn't mean, it's not that I didn't get accepted. It was more that I didn't even get a chance to send my photo or my resume, which is what you have to do. So they had no idea who I was. I, going back to the fortune teller lady, she said to me, well, I know, you know, a few people in the pro wrestling industry, I'll introduce you. And so she introduced me to uh, Akira Nogami, who obviously, you know, New Japan legend. He was with Tajiri and Smash at the time. This is probably late 2011, I would say, or early 2012. I had been working um, for Bank of America for about a year and a half at a time, um, while still working out at the gym every day and you know going to kickboxing and still going to Aikido. And it was a busy uh, schedule. And for whatever reason, there was a few things that happened in Bank of America. I decided to, to jack that in. And I went back to Australia. Didn't really, you know, wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. Ended up coming back to Japan and went back to teaching in a junior high school. And I'll never forget, I sent Akira an email on my phone, my the good old flip phones back in the day. And he told me to come down to a smash show. So I went down to the January 24th smash show at Shinjuku Face. I bought a ticket and I sat there by myself in the crowd. I met Akira after the show in the lobby. And he looked, took one look at me. I was in pretty good condition maybe about 70, 77 kilos. And he took one look at me and said, oh, in English too, because he's got good English. Oh, you want to be pro wrestler? I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's my life dream. I really, really want to be. And he said, okay, please, you know, come. I introduce you to Tajiri. And this is right after the main event. So we walked to the curtain of Shinjuku face. Now for the entire um, period that I was a trainee, right until I, the night that I debuted, I never went backstage once. It was not allowed. But on this one night, I took one step inside the curtain and Tajiri was there and he smiled and he had the green mist all over his face. And he looked at me with his green mist and his smile and kayfabe in the English. You know, he says to me in Japanese, oh, you speak Japanese. Yeah. Nihongo hanasemasu ka? Ah, hai, daijubu, daijubu, hanasemasu. Yeah, I can speak Japanese. Okay, he says, you come down to training next week and you see if you like it. I was like, wow, really? Well, I'll, I'll be there, sir, I'll be there. And I get an email the following week from Akira. Oh, I'm sorry. Smash is closing. I'll be in touch. I had literally one foot in the door, in the curtain, and my dream was over just like that. I was obviously, you know, destroyed. About two, maybe three weeks later, I still have the email actually. Akira sends me another one, another email, and he says, Tajiri World will continue. If you'd like to be with us, 
please come down to the training center at this time and this date and we'll talk. And that was the beginning of wrestling new classic WNC. And I never looked back.